The first feature we're taking a look at is the best way to shorten your drum samples, such as your 808 for example, so let's take a look at it here. What I'm used to doing is going in classic mode right here, turning down the sustain all the way, and then I would play with the decay, and that would determine how long the 808 would play for. But the other way that I've been doing more recently is if you're in one shot mode, you can also just use this fade out knob here. So what I really like about this fade out knob is it allows you to get super precise and it gets a really, really clean result. So what I can do is I could turn it all the way up if I want the fader to be all the way up and then I can move this left and right until I come up with the perfect length for my spins to fizzle out at. If the sample isn't long enough to put the fade all the way up like it fizzles out too quick, you would just use a shorter fade out too. So let's take a look at how this would work. So let's listen to the drums in here. So let's go ahead and turn this fade out all the way up and let's find a perfect spot. And let's just play it on the keyboard too so we can really get it in. So that sounds like the perfect length to me. Now let's hear it in context. And this is just overall the cleanest and best way to do that in Simpler. Some of you may know this one, so bear with me, but this one is turning down the Q volume. And what you can do is you can go over to your master track right here and you can turn down this volume and that's how you can adjust the volume of your metronome because sometimes that metronome is really freaking loud and I wanna turn it down. So obviously we wouldn't turn it all the way down, but when it's up all the way, Sometimes it's way too loud, so you can get that perfect, just maybe turn it back a little bit. The next feature we're looking at is the wind up effect. It's really hard to explain this one, so I'm just going to show you, but you'll hear this a lot in Rage Beats. The beat basically winds up as it progresses and then it eventually drops in. It sounds dope. Here's what it sounds like. All right, now let me show you how you can build that from scratch. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna export this eight bars right here from our beat. But what I've seen works best is if you take out the drums for this first bar right here. You can leave in everything else. And then after you do that, we're gonna go ahead and just select everything here and we're gonna go file, export, audio, video. And you're just gonna export just that section. So you'll notice it says the render starts at nine and goes to eight. And if yours is going the whole length of the project, you gotta select just that section. So make sure that's correct. And then we can export it. MP3 is fine. You can do wave if you want, but MP3 is fine. Okay, boss still beginning. Perfect. That's what we called it. Now let's go ahead and drag this into Ableton. And there's two parameters that we have to automate. But also, let's put this back to normal because we did kind of cut everything out. So I'm just gonna drag everything back over. Now what we're going to do is we're going to open our master here and if your automation lines aren't showing automatically, go ahead and click this so that this is highlighted up here at the top. And you'll see that mine is still there from before, but if you don't have it, it's going to be wherever your line is. And what you're going to do is you're going to take a dot and place it right at the end of where it ends. Then you're going to also put a dot on the other end and we're going to play with this value until we get it to sound how we like. So that's the first one. The second thing we have to automate is inside of the sample itself. So let's double click into the sample. We're gonna go to our clip here and we're gonna go to transposition. And what we can do is we're gonna do kind of the same thing, right? We're gonna take a clip at the very beginning here and at the very end. So we went ahead and put our markers in there and we're gonna take the first one and we're gonna go down a little bit. So these are two values that you're both gonna have to play with until you get it to sound right. Now, I kind of like it when it's at least, you know, negative 12, maybe even a little further. So let's see. Okay, so I think that sounds at a good point for our transposition. Now, let's go ahead and mess with this till we get it right. That sounds pretty good. Honestly, it might be a little too low. So let's bring this up to 12. Let's see. Okay. 
And we got a bunch of crazy ones coming up here, but if you guys are enjoying this, please smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm so more Ableton producers can see this and learn these crazy features. I appreciate it. Now let's jump right back in. The next one is the automation locker, and it's the button right next to this automation that we showed. It's this lock button right here. And honestly, I might just start keeping this on automatically because it's really great. Let me show you what it does. All right, so how this works is when you go ahead and create automation on one of your clips, for this one, I just automated the 808 glide time. I don't know why you would do that, just for this example anyways. So when you go ahead and copy this over by default with the unlock unchecked, right? I took it off. When we go ahead and copy it over, you're going to see that it copies over all of the automation. But what happens when you go in and change things around? Then you got to copy it everywhere else and things just get muddy and ugly and maybe you don't want the automation and all of that can become a hassle. So when you go ahead and turn this lock on, it's going to lock the automation as it is right now so that when you copy over the notes, it's not going to change anything. So now when I copy this over, it's not going to change the automation on the lane. So this is great if you're doing lots of automations in your tracks and you don't want to muddy everything up and have to delete automation and do all that craziness. Just go ahead and turn lock automation on. And then obviously, if you want to copy it to everything else, you can turn it off and then copy it. So that's the best workaround. This next one's really dope because it allows you to see your whole project so much easier. So did you know there's a height and width button right here? Yeah, those are height and width. And when you click on them, it's going to make your whole project show the entire width of your beat or the entire height. So let's click on width. Boom. It's going to show the entire width of my whole project. But I want to see all of the tracks too. So let's press height. Boom. And it's going to perfectly show the height of every single track. So when you're zoomed in really crazy and you're doing all this nonsense, instead of having to zoom out and do all that, you can literally just click one of these buttons and it's going to do it right there for you. <laughs> How have I not known about this earlier? And while we're on the subject of that, what you can do is actually pull down this menu right here. And I know you've probably seen this time and time again. You're like, what is the use for that? Well, what you can do is it allows you to zoom in on a certain area way easier. So let's say I'm looking at this and I say, okay, on this part of the beat, right before it drops into the next bar, I can go ahead and zoom in right there really fast. And boom, it lets you zoom into that section super quickly without having to look down here. You just keep your eyes up here and it, it's a game changer. It's so much faster. Now, the most reliable way that I found this to work is to go ahead and find the area I want to affect and then put my magnifying glass right below it on the ruler, as you can see in the black part between it. And then doing it like this allows you to get in there really precisely without it going all over the place and becoming a mess. And guys, did you know you can move it with the bottom ruler here? You can't zoom in, but you can go back and forth with the bottom ruler here. I mean, dude, this is crazy. This is a really great way just to move to the left or right in your track really fast when you're playing with some of the, maybe the effects down here in this window. It's so nice just to have that so you can go ahead and move around in your project. Really quick guys, I have to let you know that this video is sponsored by Audio Hacks. And we've just come up with a VIP program where basically we send you hordes of drum kits and fire drum sounds and advanced production tutorials that we haven't shared on YouTube. And we just finished recording a course on how you can start your own YouTube channel and all the steps that it takes to go from zero subscribers all the way up to 100K and all the secret sauce along the way that I've learned over the many years that I've been doing YouTube and all the little tricks that can put you ahead of the competition. And we also made a course on how you can sell beats and make a tight beat YouTube channel as well if that's something you're more interested in because there's a little bit of different stuff that goes into making a tight beat channel. But there's so much stuff that's included in this that we just don't have time to talk about all of it now. So if you want to learn more about the Audio Hacker VIP program, go ahead and click the link in the description below to learn more. Now let's jump back into the video. All right, if you have two computer monitors, you need to be doing this next one. What you can do is go to View, Second Window. And what it's going to do is it's going to give you the second window, aka the other view, session view, that you can put into your other window. So now I can drag this onto my second monitor and I can affect the levels on one monitor while the other monitor, I can actually look at the arrangement. This next one will speed up your workflow like crazy. So when you select a track over here and you press the right or the left arrow, the left arrow is going to close the track that's highlighted and the right arrow is going to open it. 
and then I can just close one, go down, close another one, go down, close it, or I can open one, go up, open, and I can open all my tracks like that, and that's a really fast way to navigate through your arrangement. And if you thought all of those were crazy, you gotta check out this video next with way more of them. And besides that, guys, subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Smash that like button if you haven't already. I appreciate you guys so much for watching this whole video. And always remember that consistency is the greatest catalyst for success. So all you have to do is show up every day with a positive mentality. And everything in this world is yours for the taking. Peace out, King.